Today on Fix My Oculus, we're going to take a closer look at Quest Pro controllers, how they work, what the common issues are, and how to take them apart. Stick around. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I just want to show you guys a little bit more about Quest Pro controllers. I realize I've not done a whole lot of videos on Quest Pro controllers, so I want to just do a full teardown video for you guys today. We're just going to go over the major components, how to take these apart, how to get into them, because there's no obvious screw holes, and really what the major issues with these controllers are. What are the common points of failure, and what do you look out for if you have one of these that's not working? and how do you fix it? Probably the two most common things that I see with these controllers are joystick drift because all Quest controllers share the same joystick module. And these joysticks, just like the ones in the Quest 2 and Quest 3 controllers have the same issues because, well, it's the same type of joystick. You would have thought that because it's a pro controller, they would have gone with something a little higher end or just a higher quality joystick. But no, unfortunately, it's just the same type of joystick that you would find in a Quest 2 or 3 controller. The other thing that I see a lot with these controllers is that they get stuck in what looks like a firmware update. So they'll display a purple light or flashing lights. Sometimes it's red, blue, sometimes it's purple, sometimes it's a flashing white light. And when that happens, it's almost always an indication that something has either become disconnected inside, like one of the cameras is busted or has become disconnected or there's some sort of liquid damage on the board that is causing it to fail and either not update properly or maybe it's not that it's not updating properly but the controller is detecting an issue and it thinks that it needs to update and you actually see that a lot of times on the Quest 2 and 3 headsets as well is that because maybe one of the tracking cameras is broken or because there's liquid damage in the microphone the headset will just go through like a boot loop because it thinks that there's something wrong with the software when in reality it's actually more of a hardware related problem. So with all that said, let me go ahead and show you how to open this controller up. Also, don't forget we are doing the Blackout Quest 3 giveaway, so you can enter into the giveaway by clicking the link in the description below. And stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to share a secret code that gets you more entries to win. First things first, if you've got your wrist strap on here, a lot of people don't know this, but these actually do come off the controllers. You just twist this bit slightly and then it comes out just like that. See how that turns? Kind of cool. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pop this faceplate off. There's a couple things to look out for here. In this area of the faceplate, there is a ribbon underneath that runs up and connects to it. So what we actually need to do is come in from the top on this one. And we're just gonna run our metal pry tool under here, kind of where the joystick is. And then we're just gonna run this around to the 12 o'clock and then underneath the menu button here. So I wanna pull the faceplate up away from this trigger area. So that way I don't damage the ribbon or accidentally tug on the ribbon unnecessarily. And as I pull the faceplate away here, you can see that ribbon and we'll just go ahead and pull that out so that we can detach this just like that. And that is of course your connection cable to the capacitance sensor here, your haptic feedback motor and your menu button. Now that that's squared away, what I wanna do is I actually wanna take out this rubber stopper. This piece of rubber holds this camera connection secure here. So if you open your controller up and you see that it's missing, that's a problem. And if you forget to put it in before you put your controller back together, that could also be a problem because then this happens. And then that camera is no longer connected. But we are gonna leave this disconnected because we need it disconnected right now in order to continue the teardown. And then I'm also going to disconnect this latch here. You can't see it yet, but this is actually one ribbon that runs like a U shape underneath this piece of plastic and connects to the board underneath. So we're gonna leave that disconnected for now. And then we're gonna take our T5 screwdriver, just like a lot of the Quest controllers, and we're gonna start taking out these screws in the top. And it doesn't matter what order you take these out in, you can just take out all the screws that are located here in the top. You don't need to take out these joystick screws yet, just these visible ones here. And don't, don't bother with the camera ones yet either. We'll get to those later. Then after I'm done with that, I'm gonna take my Phillips screwdriver and I'm gonna take out this tiny little Phillips screw that holds in this retaining plate so that when I pull this camera assembly up, this cable doesn't come along with it. Well, it'll still come along with it, but it just won't be pinched down so much and we'll have more room to work. And now that all that is done, this is just kind of free floating. It is held in place here a little bit just because these cameras are seated in these rings. So what we're gonna do next here is we're gonna lift on the bottom so that we can pull this away like that. And then we have one more cable connection here.
that we'll just go ahead and pull out. And then because this cable is no longer pinned down by that bracket, we can go ahead and undo that camera. And there's just a little bit of adhesive there. But now that assembly is free. So let's go ahead and focus on this for a bit here because there's a lot going on. We have our joystick, obviously. We have our buttons, which have their own little daughter board. And those were powered by that ribbon that we just disconnected. And then we have our three tracking cameras. Now this is about as far as you'll need to go for most repairs on these units because the number one thing that causes issues like the white flashing light or like the purple light of death or whatever it is, anything that's a connection issue or a tracking related issue or an update related issue, it's almost always caused by one of these three cameras going bad. And that could be from impact damage, it could be from liquid damage, it could be because one of the cable connections was damaged, it's just hard to say and the reasons vary but these cameras are easy enough to take out i use a t3 bit which seems to fit just about right and we'll just take out both screws and then we can remove this camera if we can get it away from that adhesive there and for anybody who's keeping track these are just the quest 2 cameras this tracking camera is used on the quest 2 it's used on the quest pro controllers it's used on the quest 3 and it's used on the quest 3s so it's a really common little camera module and Meta really likes this for whatever reason. I'm going to leave those two other cameras alone, but this brings us to our next most common thing. Our next most common thing is going to be joystick repair. So if you have a joystick issue like joystick drift or, you know, it's just not working and you need to replace the joystick module for whatever reason, you are at a point where that is now possible. You can, you can reinstall a new joystick from here. And what we're going to start with is we're gonna take out these two screws that we left in there before. And these are just T5 screws as well. I'm gonna undo this latch and we can actually just take this joystick topper off and then this capacitance spring should slide out. And then this joystick should just pop right out as well. And of course, if you have a replacement joystick, this is the time where you would pop that back in there, slide it in. Put your capacitance spring back on and then put your topper back on and then put the controller back together but since we're not here to do a joystick repair we're going to continue with the teardown next we're going to pop this little daughter board out and believe it or not this is just held in by three little screws there's one and these are just t5 screws by the way and there's two and three and then this button assembly just comes out and you've got your buttons too if you need those for some reason buttons never go bad it's never the buttons it's always what's underneath the buttons that goes bad. All right, moving on. Now that all that is out, I'm gonna go ahead and take this ribbon out and this just connects to that board. Just latches in there like that. It's a very critical ribbon. Not that they're not all critical, but this one just seems like it's the easiest to mess up for some reason. So when you're putting this back in place, you wanna make sure that those teeth are aligned and that your ribbon sits flush in that white box, just like that and clips in. And then when you're putting your camera assembly back in, you would feed this ribbon through those holes. Now, if you're repairing a Quest Pro controller because you're having an issue with these pogo pins, this ribbon is your attachment point here. So sometimes with the controllers that will not charge, what I see the most is that little ribbon has become detached from the board or is otherwise damaged. It's almost never just the pins because they're just pins. And we're gonna go ahead and take out this antenna as well. We'll go ahead and unplug this motor here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and unlatch this cable, and we'll go ahead and unplug this too while we're here. We're back to a T5 bit, and we're gonna take out the three screws that hold in this motherboard. And now that that is unscrewed, we should just be able to lift this board up. Be careful because there is a cable right here, and we'll go ahead and pull that out now that we've got some leeway. And it's very important that I'm lifting from this side over because there is a ribbon. This ribbon attaches under here. And this is a really bad camera angle, so I apologize. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna unclip this now that we can see it. And then I can pull in this direction away from that cable. And now that's free. And then this cable that we unlatched earlier, now I should just be able to pull straight up and have it come out. These two cables you can unlatch before you pull the board out, but most of the time it's not necessary and it's kind of hard to get to, so the chances that you break this 
in the process of trying to unattach it is greater than if you just take it out with the ribbons in place. But be careful. And that is our main motherboard. All right, so for those of you with the battery problems, we are almost there. Because all of these cables are now detached from the board, it is now safe for us to start disassembling this handle. And we're gonna start by just getting our pry tool in here and popping the clips. I'll just kind of take my pry tool and work my whole way around. And I'm just kind of popping clips as I go. And there it is. And finally, the main haptic feedback motor and the battery. Now, if you are someone that has the grip and trigger issues, we're finally there. You can finally replace your trigger and grip housing. We've torn it down enough to where this is accessible to you because this will not come out unless everything else is out of the controller, which is just a real shame because these do have issues. There's a haptic feedback motor in here. I'm not sure why this is so hard to take out, but you know, it just wasn't designed with repairability in mind. Back to our trusty T5 screw, we will go ahead and take out the screws that hold in this battery housing. There's two up here above the haptic motor. And then once all those screws are out, this whole thing just pops out of here. Just a little bit of tape. And that's what's left. And then I suppose if you were really dedicated to it or if you were having some sort of haptic feedback motor issue, um, which has been known to occur, it's not impossible for the haptic feedback motors on these to go bad or develop issues. Then what you could do is just feed these little speaker wires through. And this is also just glued on, believe it or not. And it just comes out like that. And then that's your battery. Don't try to put this in a Quest 2. And it is a big battery. This, this controller is mostly battery. But anyway, that's pretty much it. That's a full Quest Pro controller teardown and a bunch of things to look out for. If you guys think of any questions or you know anything I missed, anything you want me to cover in the next video, or even any like specific repairs that you might want to see covered on the channel, uh, just leave me a comment below. If you guys are looking for Quest Pro controller parts, do consider reaching out to us on fixmyoculus.com. We have a lot of Quest Pro controller parts, and if you're looking for something specific that maybe we don't have listed, you can always reach out to us and ask more questions. And then one more quick thing, we are still doing the Blackout Quest 3 giveaway. So if you've not entered into the giveaway yet, this is your reminder to enter in the giveaway. Giveaway. And if you have entered into the giveaway, I also have a secret code in the description below that gets you extra entries. So you can enter that secret code and get some extra points. But that's really all I got for you guys today. So we will see you on the next one.